Hello friends, welcome to Elkem IAS. So we are continuing our Indian Express Demystified series. So let's start with today's newspaper uh, of 17th May. So uh, this, this is uh, information about me. I am a doctor. I have done my graduation from Government Medical College. I have worked as AMO in the Indian Ordinance Factory Health Services. This is my fifth attempt in civil services. So let's uh, start with today's newspaper. Uh, the uh, first news is about new health ministry guidelines. The health ministry has come up uh, with new guidelines considering the fact that now uh, Corona virus pandemic has uh, reached the uh, rural hinterland. So because it has re reached the rural areas, so uh, some uh, in order to ramp up the infrastructure in villages, uh, some new guidelines have come uh, by health ministry to the state governments. It has come with a three tier response plan. So there are three tiers in, uh, into it. At the first tier, we have COVID care centers. So these COVID care centers would be set up in various buildings. Like we have in, at village level, it would be there. So panchayat building, schools, and all these things which are nearby a public health center or a, a community health center would be converted into, uh, into CCCs. So uh, it would be a 30 bed makeshift a um, makeshift availability where uh, where ams under the guidance of uh, uh, the uh, public health center a uh, nearby public health center would uh, uh, conduct the operations so here what would be available would be 30 beds would be there a pulse oximeter would be there testing rapid antigen test and uh, red testing would be there for testing of these uh, in cases second aspect uh, second tier is dedicated COVID health centers. So existing PHCs would be converted into dedicated COVID health centers. Again, they would also be 30 bedded, uh, but with additional uh, supplies like oxygen supply would be there. Uh, plus there, there would be a plan, uh, a planning in the, at the district level where these de de dedicated COVID health centers, uh, uh, there would be planning in case a surge is in the district is there, their DCHC's bed uh, facilities would be increased as per the requirement of that, that time. And finally, we have third tier where either a district hospital or a private hospital also would be con converted uh, into a COVID, COVID health hospital, dedicated uh, COVID hospital in order to provide ICU care, ventilator care, all these um, uh, provisions would be uh, provided in this. So these are the three tier uh, response plan that center has drawn for the village areas. Second aspect is surveillance. So uh, now we are uh, introducing active surveillance. Active surveillance, there are two types of surveillance in medical uh, field, active and passive. Passive surveillance is that people coming uh, to the healthcare uh, uh, provider in order to register themselves with a particular case. Active surveillance is that uh, health workers would go to the uh, people and uh, try to identify those um, with a particular symptoms. So active surveillance would be conducted in the villages by ASHAs, accredited social health activists. So this is a plan with regard to surveillance. Third aspect with regard to the guide guideline is a triage. So what is a triage? So in case of a health emergency, uh, we have to differentiate uh, because the health resources are limited. We have to uh, give them on priority to some people and have to uh, devise a mechanism of uh, which kind of care a person needs. So triage is a process through which uh, uh, people with other cases would be differentiated as per the uh, need of those uh, cases. So uh, triage would be done at the village level with the help of telemedicine. So telemedicine Tele uh, medicine consultation would be done uh, where there would be a central room deciding uh, how uh, the triage has to be done, whether the patient has to uh, go for home isolation, 
whether a patient has to go to, to the CCC, DCHC, or district hospital. So here we have to also be careful that in CCC, uh, the mild cases would be kept. Here, moderate cases would be kept, and here the severe cases would be kept. So what is the criteria for uh, moderate case? If you remember uh, criteria with regard to moderate cases, other uh, we can drive. So moderate ca cases, if uh, mm, the saturation is between 90 to 94 percent. If it is more than 94 percent, then it is mild. Less than 90 percent, it's severe. At the same time, second is the respiratory rate. If it is more than 22 uh, to 24, so if uh, between 22 to 24, it is a moderate case. Below it would be a mild case, and above it would be a severe case. So there are two technologies that are used: uh, oxygen saturation and the respiratory rate, rate in order to differentiate whether. Uh, uh, whether a uh, uh, case is mild, moderate, or severe. So these are the new guidelines by the health ministry. So let's move to the next uh, next article. So it is anxiety in auto hubs. So right now, uh, what we are seeing is that Manesar has uh, various auto plants. For example, the Maruti Suzuki, Honda, Honda uh, scooters, um, uh, and various are uh, there. So they are because of the second wave of pandemic, all these plants are shut. Uh, uh, previously, what uh, in the first wave, what happened was because of the anxiety, uh, workers decided to go to their home places in UP and Bihar. But right now, they have decided as of now to you know, stay in, uh, in these localities. Uh, uh, but there is a concern if the uh, lockdown is extended uh, further, it will result in uh, again an um, um, uh, exodus of migrants to UP and Bihar again. So uh, this article deals with this. Next is this is the editorial, the cry on the wall. So. What this article is detailing that uh, uh, finally the central government has accepted the fact that the second wave has uh, reached to the rural areas. That's why they have come with the guidelines. However, in this pro during the second wave, what we are exper experiencing there is a complete missing of the elected representatives in the uh, in, in, in the war against the second. Wave. So the first wave we had. Honorable Prime Minister coming and speaking to the public and he was leading the fight from the front. However, the visibility of Prime Minister has reduced in the second wave of the pandemic. At the same time, elected representatives are only few elected representatives are at the forefront. Others are not, not there, uh, are not there. And in fact, uh, because of this, uh, uh, first of all, uh, it is creating two problems. First of all, uh, these uh, uh, citizens are not having their elected representatives speaking and consoling them. And uh, second is that uh, uh, citizens want results. So these results are not being de delivered with regard to the COVID care. So it is uh, adding all, all this missing of these elected representatives from the scene is ad adding to the pandemic's daily tolls. So this is the article. Next, uh, let's move on to the new, uh, in a new light. So Supreme Court last year had uh, ex expecting that there would be a surge in cases had give guidelines that that uh, uh, prisoners staying in the prison also have a um, right to health. So in order to ensure that their right to health is there, it is it was decided that a committee would be formed in all the uh, prisons which, uh, which will decide uh, to uh, decongest the prison. So uh, the aim was that uh, the population in the prison should be less. Now, again, uh, a Supreme Court judge, uh, bench has nudged the, uh, these committees to uh, uh, step up their efforts in order to release those prisoners who are, uh, uh, are there. And they, uh, it has suggested certain criteria like we can use age. Those who are under trials, they can be prioritized. And those with comorbidities, Should be prioritized in order to decongest. And one more guideline has been, uh, one more idea has been suggested: the how the idea of house arrest can be uh, explored by these authorities. So with this, uh, let's move to the next article. This is an article how the rice and wheat exports are at record high. So if we look at these uh, articles, uh, these uh, uh, these uh, data, so we will see that in 2020, 21. Uh, Compared to the last year, the wheat uh, exports have risen dramatically. We see like from 2 million tons, it has risen to 20 million tons. 
and rice also basmati also uh, non basmati non basmati has increased from 50 million ton to 130 million ton so what at present is happening is that uh, we from the central uh, so it uh, this year has been marked by two uh, aspects with regard to the uh, this serial pro uh, procurement process the central government from the central government pool 92 million tons of 92 million tons of wheat and rice were distributed so it was distributed through pds system at the same time the pradhan mantri garib kalyan an yojana and atam nilbhar bharat package and through these mechanisms the central pool of these uh, cereals was distributed so there was 92 million ton so it was uh, all uh, time a record distribution so second aspect this is uh, this is what we can call pds uptake offtake second is even after this much central uptake we are having uh, right now stocks of around 77 million tons and this is not only above the minimum requirement so one figure we have to remember is minimum requ requirements minimum buffer stock norms so what is minimum bu buffer stock so it is uh, the idea is that a minimum uh, stock of these cereals should be available at the central level of around 21 million tons so this is the minimum bu buffer stock so uh, generally this uh, uh, the storage is more, way more than a minimum buffer stock and it was last year around 76 uh, 73 million tons and this year even after this much central pool offtake uh, through pds uh, 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 there is a pool of 77 million tons so why it has happened it has happened due to two reasons first is that uh, there is excessive production this time and third is government incentives like pds and public procurement at msp levels in fact, these state, three states, Punjab, Madhya Pradesh, and uh, uh, Haryana account for the maximum uh, MSP uh, government uh, uh, mechanism to uptake uh, these, uh, uh, for uptake of these uh, food stocks. So, uh, uh, the, uh, this is the second observation. We have uh, stocks also at a uh, very high level. And third is exports have risen. So, First of all, the central pool uptake of 92 million tons, what are the advantages coming out of it? So because of this much up, uh, uh, offtake of PDS system, the in a pandemic life situation where everything was locked down, there was no uh, famine and food rats. So in a, pop, uh, a population with very low uh, uh, purchasing capacity and large number of poor, and large population, there were real possibility of famines and food riots in, during this pandemic that was averted. Second aspect is with regard to the stock exports. What are the reasons uh, for so, uh, such excessive exports uh, uh, if we see? There are three reasons uh, detailed in the article. First reason is that if we see that uh, FAO's uh, monthly serial price index uh, so it as it is at an all time high so it's like rising the commodity prices of the international the market of these cereals is increasing because of that the uh, indian uh, wheat exports are becoming competitive even the msp uh, even these some export prices are more than msp also second aspect is below msp for your uh, msp availability so as we know what is msp regime so uh, the government announces minimum support price as, at, at which it procures from the farmers however uh, that depends on the presence of mandis and the infrastructure available some states like punjab haryana and madhya pradesh are having these mandis which are functioning very properly so they are able to procure these uh, cereals at uh, msp prices however a significant part of the uh, rice especially rice it is more so in case of rice uh, is procure uh, so it is available at below msp prices because the in enough infrastructure by the government is not available in order to procure that much rice so that rice is available at below msp so again it increases the uh, competitiveness of indian uh, rice in the international market third aspect is that it has been highlighted that uh, uh, 92 million ton has been uh, there has been so much pdf of, of take 
because of that there would certainly have been leakages of this uh, this food uh, this uh, this cereal uh, uh, in, in the open market and from there the uh, at a very low price uh, the uh, these uh, cereals would be available and that again increases the competitiveness of indian uh, uh, rice and wheat as uh, into the international market resulting in the rise of the exports of the um, cereals so with this i think this article comes to an end next is about two can a single lightning flash uh, kill 18 elephants so uh, in in assam on an hill top 18 elephants were killed so and the reason prim uh, primarily has been said due to lightning now there are speculations how can uh, a lightning kill 18 18 elephants so first of all we should know what are the mechanisms how lightning uh, 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 results in death first of all uh, there can be a direct flash directly the lightning can uh, 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 go on a particular living object and uh, kill that object second is we have something called side flash third we have touch potential and fourth we have step potential so what are these things so direct is it, if an animal is there it will go directly and hit it second aspect is that with regard to side flash if you suppose there is a nearby tree nearby tree is there so if lightning is there from that lightning a sub a side flash can come and kill that animal third is touch flash sometimes uh, lightning is there on a, a side tree and that animal goes and touch it or touch flash is there step potential so what is step potential it is the most common lightning hazard so it is therefore four legged legged animals so in this case what happens is that there is a wide gap between the front feet and the uh, uh, hind feet so because of that uh, the lightning if strike here it will pass through the body and it will kill that animal so this is step potential in fact that's the reason that elef elephants are more vulnerable because the distance between front feet and the back feet is very large so that is the reason uh, uh, how uh, that is the mechanism how lightning uh, kills these ele elephants and so uh, in fact uh, because of this uh, side flash if we say during thunderstorms it is advised that people should uh, stay away from each other of minimum 2 2 meter distance should be there because there can be a slide a side flash that means if a lightning strikes a person and a person is standing by there can be a side flash to that person and that person can also get uh, get the lightning so uh, these are the mechanisms uh, this is the article uh, detailing about the mechanism how lightning kills the elephants now uh, cyclone tote so uh, it is a new uh, cyclone that is emerging in the arabian sea so as we know that indian ocean region has two parts arabian sea and bay of bengal bay of bengal so what happens that during pre monsoon and post monsoon phase we have tropical cyclones developing uh, in indian ocean region so why a tropical cyclone develops is a tropical cyclone it uh, it is as we know low pressure system so if it is low pre pressure system the wind speeds are very high and this spiral around it this low pressure system and the energy for this is provided by heat in the, on the 50 first 50 meter of the ocean and the condensation that uh, when the water condenses Uh, then heat is released that uh, 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 heat of condensation provides the uh, energy to the cyclone to cause the destruction now uh, generally it is seen that uh, on an average on one year five cyclones are seen and most of them goes to bay of bengal four is to one ratio one is to four ratio is there because bay of bengal because of multiple reasons first of all that bay of bengal the temperature is more than arabian sea and if there is more temperature more cyclone uh, generation would be there second is aspect is that those pacific uh, cyclones then they can uh, come into the bay of bengal region so the, uh, because of these reasons uh, the bay of bengal used to be the case however recently we are seeing that uh, 
uh, Arabian Sea is becoming uh, more uh, more favorable to the cyclones. In fact, Tote is Arab, uh, uh, arising in the Arabian sea, sea and it can impact the Gujarat state. The warning is like this, that uh, some districts of Gujarat would be there. And in fact, the severity of the cyclones in Arabian Sea is uh, increasing. The reason for it is uh, said to be in the global warming, uh, that uh, the Arabian, because of uh, climate change uh, and greenhouse effects, the Arabian Sea is heating up, resulting in more cyclones in the Arabian Sea. So let, let's move on to the last article of the, uh, the newspaper today. So uh, now, what has happened right now that COVID, this is a platform for uh, registering uh, for vaccination. So the uh, rules for third party sharing has been tightened. So in order to know about what is this, we have to know about what is API. API is application program interface. So there are two types, private and open. So open APIs allow a third party to mod uh, make some changes uh, in, in a particular software. So if we uh, we know that like there is something called Google API, we use Google Maps. So Google uh, also has open API. So because of that, other uh, uh, softwares can modulate according to the, their requirement. For example, Uber can use it. Uh, then uh, uh, this taxi sharing, then food food outlets can use it in order to improve upon it. So similarly, open API. A policy was announced for COVID platform so that some third party can use this platform in order to improve the services to the citizens. However, there were concerns. So first concern was that it was being misused uh, uh, by some hackers. In, uh, second uh, concern was inequity. So these uh, uh, companies, what they used to do is they used to block all the slots uh, in one go. Because of that, the uh, uh, people were finding it difficult to register their, themselves on the COVID platform. So what are the new changes that has happened? First of all, cache, caching is being done. That what is caching is that now the uh, for third parties, the, info, uh, the database, public database on the COVID platform with, will be available after a delay of 30 minutes. So this will, this will slow the tra traffic on this. Second is that mean, uh, now a uh, uh, set limit is set that from one IP server. So in five minutes, only 100 uh, interactions can be done. So this will uh, take care about uh, these uh, companies going for uh, booking the slots in a very fast way and those slots getting finished in a matter of minutes. Third aspect is that geofencing is being done. So what is geofencing? Now only Indian APIs IPs can uh, can uh, can uh, get themselves registered on COVID platform. So what are the advantages of geofencing is that first of all the traffic would be reduced because foreign uh, IPs would not uh, come there uh, uh, come and the traffic only uh, domestic traffic would be there. Second pro uh, benefit of a uh, uh, geofencing would be that. Uh, uh, sometimes there are uh, various hackers operating across the globe, so they would uh, they can uh, go for a attack called distributed denial of services. So, uh, uh, so this would be reduced uh, when there is a geofencing and only uh, people from uh, uh, Indian jurisdictions would be able to uh, uh, able to access this uh, 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 COVID platform. So with this, uh, today's newspaper uh, analysis of Indian Express in our Indian Express demystified series comes to an end. You can find the notes of uh, uh, the newspaper uh, uh, at our Telegram channel also and below this description in a Google Drive format. And I would like you to uh, um, like these videos, uh, comment on these, ask your doubts and also subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for listening to me.